back to the channel. My name is Crawford. This is Virginia is for Lowriders. Today, we're getting back on the Mazda for the 138th video or something. It's up there a lot. I don't know. It's in the 20s. But today, we're going to do something similar to what we did last week. Well, I should say this weekend, we're doing something similar to what we did last weekend. And that's bouncing around. We've got a lot of random stuff that has to be done to get this body drop done, to get the front end buttoned up, and there's a lot. So we're gonna be chipping away at that. One of those things is I got the electric fan in yesterday or the day before. I got the heat shrink tubing with the glue in it because all of the heat shrink tubing that I had didn't have glue in it. Got truck bed coating last week. I have the muffler that I still need to put on. I got some cans of primer to prime before that stuff. I got this pretty extensive, well, extensive for home kit of Deutsch connectors and a tooling to put that together. Got some new tabs in today for zip tie tabs like we did on the other side. I think I'm just going to add some in here for future growth. If something else gets mounted to the front end, I have another place to run the wires through. Last night I went through and continued to metal finish all of this and get this all sanded and prepped for primer and hopefully paint by the end of this weekend. We're gonna seam seal, because I really wanted to get it in seam sealer last weekend and we didn't make it that far. There's a lot of random stuff. We need to build a shroud for the radiator. This radiator actually has some stuff built into it that might make the shroud making a little easier. There's tabs on this one. Usually radiators don't have tabs like this, so that might help us. These are actually the factory Mazda tabs, so I need to build a shroud for this for the new fan. I need to uncover. There's actually a metal break underneath all that crap, so I need to uncover that. Seam seal. There's a lot. I'm kind of lost here because there's like there's so many little things. A lot more metal finishing, grinding, hole filling. A lot of seam sealing and taping and priming. I want to eventually get the intake off. I want to rebuild the carburetor at some point in the near future. I want to actually go through and shave this intake. I think I finally talked myself into it. It's already been smoothed and polished, but I want to take it one step further. Do away with all of the nipples and tabs and everything. Smooth it all out, polish it, TIG weld it and all that stuff. So, I need to stop rambling, I need to get to work. My friends are outside making noise, so you can probably hear it in the camera. So, I've never been here before, do all the normal YouTube stuff, the likes and the comments, and I'd much appreciate all of that. So, let's stop rambling, get into some work. I'll add the footage that I did last night of me starting to sm smooth all that stuff out. Yeah. I don't know where we're gonna start. I'm just gonna let ADD take the wheel yet again because it works out better that way. I get more stuff done. After two hours of reading descriptions of different brands of fans, this is the one that I came up with. I got it off Summit. That's actually a Summit racing brand, I guess. Thinking right in the center, really, really simple shroud. It's going to be flat panel, straight across. I think I'm gonna break the edges. They'll come in here. They won't touch this, but they'll be like a, a little lip to give it some rigidity, top and bottom. So I think this is the first plan after I move all of that crap on the other side of the shop. 
getting this mounted up so I can get the core support painted and get this installed back in place. So I need to I need to figure out what these are called online, the specific Mazda ones, because as you can see, there's like a couple different brands of them here. I don't know if, I don't know. The grill isn't held in there very well, and I need to fix that. So these guys are going to come off. I got some new ones, and yeah, let's do that first. Okay, after what took way, way too long, made a template, transferred the template like four times because I can't apparently use a tape measure over to this piece of sheet metal that's potentially way too thin and it might be thrown in the trash. But we're gonna try to cut this and bend this to fit the fan shroud. It probably isn't going to work, so. That's the plan. Cut this and hopefully use my brake that I never use that just sits in my garage. Still learn how to use that thing and be precise with it because I can feel on the aluminum how quickly it would go through it. Okay. Like a, so I was wondering, What's this spoon for on the back side? Is that supposed Protect to rest fingers. on the metal? Oh, I thought maybe it's supposed to rest on the metal. Because the, if you're watching it, you're pushing it and that steel's curling. If that, if that wasn't there, you yeah. would just ruin your fingers. You see this? That's a bad, that's a bad boy. That? Oh, so you can check your gauge. So if it won't fit in that, then it's too thick. See the numbers right there? 18 gauge or 16 gauge, so this is 18. It's kind of cool that they built that in there. No, I don't. So, you know the difference between the lefts and rights? Look how it works. You want it to curl up. So, that's why I was using the green ones for the first cuts. You know, to me, it doesn't matter. Because, um, you know, I, I just use yellows on everything. <laughs> yellows are only made for straight cuts. Uh, the depth of the blade. That's a yes. Because I've had a six inch transition <laughs> in the work <laughs> on some job. Because I had my six inch. So it's pretty rigid because the sides are going to be mounted solid. I might have to put some bead rolls in it. I don't know. Where is your bead? Oh, it's behind. It's buried like everything else in my garage. All right. So we got the thing bent. I don't know why I need to start this with it out. And everything fits in there nicely. This will be trimmed to the same shape as that factory metal thing. This guy will sit in there. Something like this. James and I played with the bead roller for a little bit. I have this die for cutting louvers and I've only ever played with it. I've never actually made anything with it. So we're contemplating on putting some really tiny louvers in here. I'm not sure if it's necessary. It was just going to be for strength, but I'm not sure if this is going to get really flimsy when I cut the hole or tighten up when I cut the hole and then bolt the fan to it. So 
we're just going to cut it first and I can always add the louvers or dimple dies or something else after the fact. But we're going to cut the hole now, trim this now and get everything bolted in place and see how it goes. Close enough. cutting you don't want to complete the cut you only want to go about halfway down the length of the plier and then choke up on it and continue the cut again and I'll show you why get this side pretty first so, so whenever you're I'm actually recording, when you're cutting and you stop the cut and then you go to cut again, there's a a dimple there. In the corner, you have to. You have no choice because you're cutting the corner out. But on your long cuts. So you wouldn't want to do this. Oh, well that's a hot cut, baby. So. Ow. I think sharp. See the yeah, dimples? Yeah. So. Watch those sheet metal guys do duck on like Instagram and stuff. And they're smooth like that. So if you do it like this, and you just use half the blade. There's no, there's no indentation. Makes the finished result nicer. Learn, learn something new every day, man. Hey, man, you could leave this in the video because you might teach somebody something they don't know. Yeah, I could. bolted up I was trying to think of how to make how to make it not flimsy and realize it came with those little feet to come on the side so between here these four bolts and the other side there's not much there to move around and again we broke the edges inward so that gives it rigidity or whatever you want to call it that way I need to clean this up with a whiz wheel or something, make it look a little fancier. This took way too long. This There was way too much back and forth between James and I about what I should do and us brainstorming, but it's cool. This might eventually get scrapped and I might build the one build one the way that James and I were speaking about with louvers and all that but for now I think this is going to work just fine yeah, this thing's 
pretty stiff for as thin as it is. It's 18 gauge, which in the steel world isn't very much. I mean, it's sheet metal like car stuff. The aluminum stuff, it's even less. Like it's, it's about as flimsy as it comes. Yeah, that's, that's pretty stiff, especially once these get in there. I don't, I don't think that's going anywhere. Like a ratchet strap holding something down in the back of your truck. It ain't going nowhere. Final product. Not too bad. Still want to clean the edges up. I want to paint this. I don't want to leave it raw aluminum. So it might get some holes popped in the edge here to take away that possible noise there. Maybe it'll stiffen it up a little bit more, but it's not bad. Let's see if it uh, see if it fits. I already deleted the factory fan, so it should be okay. I don't think I actually mentioned why I'm putting the electric fan in there. So for one thing, many trucks generally don't make any horsepower. A mechanical fan robs horsepower. They're, they drain, especially on stuff like this, when it either didn't have a clutch or the clutch was stuck on all the time. So that means that engine has to turn that little fan and have that probably little fan probably takes 10 to 15 horsepower just to turn it. It could be less, but on a larger vehicle, some of them are around 30 horsepower, whatever it is. It robs some kind of horsepower regardless. So that's one thing. Another thing is we're trying to clean up the engine bay, I'm trying to narrow it down to where it only has one very small belt. There is basically nothing in here but a single belt going to the alternator. But it looks pretty good in there. And the other thing is it's a body drop. If you're trying to tackle a body drop, it's another thing you need to consider. You're raising the engine up and putting the radiator down. So that mechanical fan that stopped here and rotated, I mean, it was, it's pretty small. I, don't, I think I threw it away already. It's pretty small. But the top of the fan blade would be basically at the top of the radiator now. So by doing this, we're eliminating that weird height issue. Plus, when you just look in there, I mean, unless you're standing here staring at the fan, everything looks cleaner. Once I go through and pick all these stickers off, paint all this stuff black, and get it all blended in, it just looks nicer. You don't. You just look in there and don't see a bunch of crap. So we got about I don't know half an inch between those two, which is fine with me, because the engine doesn't really move very much, and this doesn't move at all. So we're looking pretty good. I think I might find a thicker piece of aluminum. I'm not totally sold on this yet. I have to see how it functions with the fan on. Which I might hook it to my jump box here in a few minutes and try it out. I'm not totally sold on it. I've had this sheet of aluminum laying around that I don't even know where I got it from for years. That's what I got left of it. When I started this project this morning, I was thinking that aluminum was thicker than it actually is. So we used it. If I have to, I'll use it as a template later. I'll just have to trace it out, break the corners, and easy peasy. So one other thing that I've been thinking about, because I don't like the way that it looks, to me, right here, looks unfinished because you can see the reservoir. I don't know what it is about it that bothers me. On this side, I needed to come up with something to fill that corner in. So I think I might have came up with something. This is the piece that came with those trailer fenders. So it normally would sit in here and this piece was real big and it covered up three quarters of this 
I'm thinking starting at nothing and gradually as we get closer to the firewall stopping somewhere around here so nice swooping edge trying to make like kind of like we did down here with curling that edge over making it look a little finished I think that'll make it look less like a trailer fender than it does now not sure if we're going to get to that this weekend we got a lot of other stuff going on so I'm going to pull the headlight buckets out I'm going to finish metal finishing the stuff on the front end that I want to do I bought brand new headlights for this I want to get all of this stuff metal finished and seam sealed this weekend that is, that is the, the main goal I think that I'm, I'll be okay with metal finished, seam sealed and painted the front end not sure basically I'm talking about this side of the front end that way headlights can go in new horns can go in all of it be painted radiator will be in permanently need to finish up frame rails and then bumper can get bolted back on and I can continue working my way through normally you would prep paint every single bit of it but it's spray paint I can work as I go and feel more accomplished by knocking out small portions of this I don't know if that makes any sense to anybody else but it makes sense in my head so that's what we're gonna do enough rambling I think we're gonna weld some tabs to the other side, like I said earlier, for future growth, potential for wiring. I'm rambling, shut up and do some work. That's what we're doing. Alright, just like last week, what about some of these on the other side, on the other fender? Just little tabs that you can run zip ties through. I'm going to do the same thing here, weld on a few here. I might weld on a few throughout, just so after it's all painted I don't have to go back and add any, just in case. So, I'm just going to weld these on real quick. There was a whole lot of filling and grinding going on. I think I got just about every hole, visible hole, filled and ground down and metal worked. For tonight, I'm going to put some primer, at least on the front of this, on the back of this, just to seal it up, stop everything from potentially flash rusting. I need to start taping and seam sealing. Whenever you tape before you seam seal, it tends to make it look a little bit more professional and not like, like you didn't care at all, I guess. I don't know. Nicer result, that's what I'm trying to get at. So, paint and then some seam sealer maybe. I got the front sheet metal all primered up. First coat. I might put another coat on it tomorrow. I'm not, not sure. Some spots will look a little thin. Put some seam sealer along the inner edge on both sides. This side, you'll literally never see it. So I try to put it on a little thick just to ensure that no moisture can make it in any kind of cracks and crevices. It's just got brush strokes in it. It's not super pretty. 
the inside, as I'll show you all tomorrow, I tape both sides all the way around, lay a nice smooth bead in, smooth it out my finger, and it, and it just makes everything look, I don't know, molded, I guess. Even though this is a good looking edge because there's nothing there, Every, all the welds on the other side. It still finishes it off, gives it a, a better finished appearance, but again, this is all done. Primed the top edge of there, so I'm going to stop here. It's like midnight. I'm pooped, so see y'all in the morning. morning went through taped up a nice thin line laid the seam sealer down on both sides of this my hope is to get some paint on this before I go in the house tonight not positive that that's gonna happen or not because it's already pretty late so put some primer on there went through and made this template to fit up into the inner fender so it'll be something like I had talked about last night this fits both sides so I don't have enough big pieces of sheet metal in here I gotta go out to the shed and I really don't feel like dragging that piece of sheet metal all the way out there so or all the way in here then all the way back out there so we're going to take the grinder out there and just cut off a chunk of it, bring that back in the garage, and go from there. And hopefully we can get that welded in and actually look like we made some progress this weekend. My buddy finally got his skid steer all painted up. He's got all the panels laying out here. So hopefully that's leaving my house soon so I can use my whole driveway again.
All right, so I didn't talk a bunch. I managed to not ramble, which is unlike me, but I got a lot of stuff done to where it actually feels like we made some progress this weekend. And I can go in here and get this edited and hopefully go to bed before one o'clock in the morning. Maybe, I don't know. But there is a method to this madness of my ADD brain and I have a system when it comes to stuff like this. It all makes sense in my head. So what I did was paint the core support inside and outside. Started painting a little bit in here. Painted all of this stuff. So in doing this, this allows me to come in during this week, seam seal some stuff, finish metal finishing all of this, get everything done and seam sealed as far as that goes prime all of this stuff while that primer is setting i can pull my wires through wire up my headlights put my new headlights in put my new horns in wire and plumb the stuff attached to the radiator all while that is drying once that primer is dry i can back tape some of this stuff or cover it up with a tarp or whatever paint this stuff i can keep the ball rolling that's what i'm trying to say it's not like if I completely metal finished everything and y'all just watched me metal finish for hours, then I painted, I'd have to go sit inside. And I, I don't like sitting inside, so this allows me to not sit inside. It allows me to continue to work and do everything that I need to do, and I'm rambling away. So what you saw me do here, because I didn't talk about it before, go in made some templates, made some filler pieces on both sides, welded them in, started metal finishing them. They're not 100%. I still have to weld the corners, but then I'm, uh, I'm pretty happy with the way it turned out. It's kind of cool. It looks something, I don't know, more factory, more not as boring as just a fender thrown in there. Looks less like a trailer fender between what we did last weekend and this. I think I'm going to flare them out a little bit, give a little bit more curves to it. To, uh, you can see that one, it's pushed out a little bit, but I think I'm gonna go a little more drastic. Just a, I don't know, make it more appealing, I guess, instead of just a straight trailer fender. But the paint turned out pretty good. It has a texture to it. It is a very lightly textured truck bed coating. It's tough stuff. I kind of like the way it looked on this truck because I did it last time on the on the tubs only. And I think it gave it kind of a, almost a factory, I don't know. I don't know, not necessarily factory, but a cleaner look because it's, still a truck. I want it the direction that I'm going with the truck. It'll make a little bit more sense later on, I guess. I haven't really explained exactly the end goal of how I want this thing to look, but it'll make sense later. So I think that's about it. I'm rambling. It's late. I got editing to do and I'll see you guys next week. So thanks for stopping by. Don't forget to subscribe and do all the normal YouTube stuff. And hopefully you'll come back next week, which there will be much more work done because next week is Thanksgiving and I have off for two days. So in those two days, I should be able to get more, a lot more work than I normally get done. So yeah, I'm rambling again. See you guys next week.